Okay guys, welcome back. This time we're going to go through just a real simple kind of an exercise, I guess you'd say. This really isn't a work of art or anything like that. It'd be considered maybe mediocre clip art. Uh, but what it's going to do is just going to kind of get you used to getting in that mentality of creating, uh, you're going to be creating elements out of combining and clipping different shapes. Uh, you know, like circles, triangles, squares, stuff like that. And instead of trying to draw something, uh, we're going to be using shapes. That's where Inkscape really excels, is just by manipulating shapes to create what you want. So in this case, we're going to create a wine glass. Um, real simple. Again, you're not going to win any awards with this design, but it's a good exercise to get used to the tools. So, and, and pretty much, I, I believe everything on the glass is just going to be created of ovals. So we'll come over here and we'll uh, go to the Create Circles, Ellipses, and Arcs tool. And the first one we're going to draw is going to be the glass itself and the top part of it. Uh, and so, you know, it looks kind of like an egg, but that'll be fine. I'm going to run through this kind of quick so that you can just get an idea. Um, and you can, you can play around with it and create the shapes the way that you want them. Um, but this is just for a quick kind of exercise type deal. But you'll want to, uh, too, something that helps quite a bit is you'll go to the fill and stroke after you create the shape and then turn your opacity down to about half that way you can see through it and you can see where things are overlapping and stuff like that and it just helps to, to it helps to see what you're doing you can see multiple layers at once all right so we've got our glass now we'll do another oval and this is going to be the stem of our glass and then we'll do another oval and this is going to be the base of our glass so we got those three uh elements right there now what we'll do is uh, i'll go ahead and just move them over here and just kind of eyeball it where you think it'll look good now on this piece um just use some imagination because we're going to cut the top of it off so just kind of use some imagination as far as the length of this and everything else uh, but i'm just going to put it probably right about there and then i'll put this kind of centered into the, the uh that elongated the, the stem part of the wine glass okay so we've we've got our uh these three shapes uh, looking good kind of for what we're wanting. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and uh, drag around all of them. Just click the mouse button, drag around, and this will select all three objects. And what you'll want to do is you'll want to go to your line and distribute menu. Uh, mine's already open, so I can just click it and manipulate it. If it's not open for you yet, you just want to go to object. Then all the way close to the bottom, you'll see line and distribute. Click that, and it'll open this menu for you. But then we'll come over to our line and distribute menu and just click on the center on vertical axis. Right now, because we're working with this object and we don't have a page um, actually open or anything like that, we're just working with this object. Um, just choose relative to selection area and then you are going to click on center on vertical axis. Now it didn't move a lot, but as you see now, everything that we've created so far is centered on the vertical axis. That makes sense, right? <laughs> okay, so now what we'll do to, to cut the top of the glass off, what we'll do is we'll take this same shape uh, on the top, this oval shape. You'll come out here, make sure you deselect everything by clicking off to the side of your graphic. And then you'll uh, click on this to select it on this top oval then what we'll do is right click and then duplicate I'm gonna uh, scoot that down a little bit um, and now what we'll do is we will f um, now that we've got that selected uh, we'll come up here rotate selection 90 degrees clockwise and uh, holding the control button and that way it'll stay everything stays centered holding the control button you'll just slide it up uh, to where you think you're looking at this bottom part because we're fixing to cut the top of it off. So you're just looking at this bottom part and kind of drag it up to where you think what a wine glass would look like um, from the you know from this perspective. And also note that as long you need to be clear of this because if I'm down here and I clip it, it's going to leave that little piece. Then you're going to have an extra step where you have to break it apart and delete that piece itself. So um, so you want to be clear of that, but as long as you're clear of it even that much, you're good. But I'm going to go, I don't know, say right about there. Looks good to me. So now what we'll do is we'll create, uh, we'll grab that oval and then also grab that, the oval that we just, uh, and to grab multiple objects, you'll need to hold the shift button. So what we'll do is like you grab this, then you hold on the, down on the shift key 
and you'll click on this one and that's got both objects selected then you'll go to path and then go right down here to difference so that creates the top of our wine glass it looks a little funky because it doesn't have a back part yet but we'll make it here in a second with another oval um, so now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and let's just uh, click and drag around all these and that's going to select all these objects and then what you want to do is go to path uh, union and that makes them all one piece uh, so now we're committed to this so to speak uh, we don't we can't manipulate them around anymore but that also means that we can't mess them up and get them out of line this is all going to stay this way now the next thing to do is we'll kind of zoom in here on the top and what we're going to do is kind of uh, create an oval that somewhat fits this shape um, it doesn't have to be perfect uh, but you just kind of want to you know see like that like that's not perfect at all it's way wider over here but what we're going to do is once we get it down here it actually needs to be maybe a little bigger this is something you'll just kind of have to play around with uh, but just line it up and generally at this point what you want to do is you want to make sure uh, that your ends are um, lined up with the edges of that top part of the glass so that uh, you don't have you know some kind of weird ending there once we once we uh, finish this all right now what we need to do is because we're going to use this to create kind of a shading to make it look like the top of the glass we're actually going to duplicate that so we're going to click on it we're going to right click duplicate then what you can do is rope around everything again and this is going to select everything now remember we've got two layers of this well we only want one for this union because we want to union that piece with the bottom uh, so what we'll do is holding shift We'll also your shift works the same way for deselecting multiple objects so we've got three selected as you can see down here you'll see three objects selected um, and we'll hold shift and we'll just click on this one that we duplicated now you see down here we only have two objects selected all right and then what we want to do is the same thing as before we'll come up here path and go to union and now as you see that clean that all up um, it gave us a nice looking top for our glass um, not perfect we're off a little bit but again this is just an exercise and from a from a little bit of a distance uh, nobody's gonna be looking at it like this if you're using it for design on t-shirt or something uh, but you know you could have played with it and pull it in a little bit when you was doing your oval uh, so anyway we've got our basic wine glass now and uh, to, to kind of demonstrate the use of some other tools what I'm gonna do is we'll go ahead and and, and uh, uh, put some of a put some of the finest wine available in the glass um, and something that might help on these rulers what you can do is you can come and actually once it's highlighted there you can actually drag down a guide and we're going to create a guide right there and that just gives me a stopping point at the bottom of it so that I don't overrun it um, then I'll come down and we'll choose our Bezier pen that's the same pen that I used in the tutorial about the uh, creating uh, flourishes and stuff like that uh, so grab the bezier pen and then wherever you want your wine to be uh, approximately it's going to change a little bit because um, there's one step after this but let's just say we want it about half full uh, and we'll start here and click and then holding con uh, holding control uh, you'll drag across that that keeps it straight uh, so you'll just be able to run straight click there you can hold on control if you want to come straight down this shape out here doesn't matter at all so you can do it like this you can do it like this as long as you're clear of the glass itself you're good uh, and just to demonstrate my point i'll make it nice and sloppy the only thing that matters is what's inside the glass and that you're outside of it now to get rid of that stroke what we'll do is we'll come down holding shift we'll come down click this white x and that'll get rid of our stroke and then we're going to make our wine this kind of maroon color so now we've got our wine, uh, the outline of it, and we'll go back to our select tool. And then what we'll do is we'll duplicate the glass itself. And so you just select it, then right click, duplicate. Then you'll, uh, holding shift, you'll come down here and you'll also uh, grab our a, a faux wine here. I guess it'd be fine wine. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that corny joke. But anyway, 
and so we'll hold shift and then that allows us to select both objects once both objects are selected you'll come up to path come down to uh, intersection and then see as you can see that put it in the line but it looks weird because you have that angle here and then this is straight so what you can do for that is we'll actually grab that right click and duplicate that's the reason why we didn't uh, union that that and we need the color difference because uh, if there was the exact same color we wouldn't be able to see that different color uh, see that rim of the glass then we'll drag that down on top of that and on this one here we'll come in and what we need to do is we need to get it all within the glass so holding shift we'll just come in and you just want it just inside the glass and it actually looks off to one side so what you can do in a, uh, a case like that is you know grab your wine glass and then we'll again we'll align and distribute still looks strange uh, so without holding shift if you're not holding shift what that'll do is when you're manipulating this when we just pull these edges it'll only pull this edge and this is the one I'm having a problem with so I'm just gonna pull that one over that's close enough this is just like I said it's just an exercise uh, to get you used to working with these tools all right so we've got I keep doing that so we've got uh, now we've got our our uh, ellipse drawn there and this is going to be actually the top of you know the top of the wine so it looks kind of at the same perspective as what the glass is at um, and then we'll just change the color of that to that same maroon but we can come over here and we'll go to the fill and stroke and what we'll do is we'll go ahead and turn on that we'll turn the opacity all the way up and then we'll lighten it like the light is hitting it hitting it so see that that gives us that look you know that depth where it looks the same as the glass itself and actually what you can do is grab that we're gonna grab all this and go ahead and kind of color this right now um, so grab everything turn it up to 100 percent and then we'll grab this and we'll make it kind of a, co a glass color and then we'll grab that one and we can we can make that the same color and then just come over here and go in your fill menu you'll go to where the l which i guess that's light i believe that's lighten uh but you'll come over and just darken that up just enough to where you can you know it gives you the impression of the outline of the top of the glass so and again you're not going to win any awards with this graphic but it's kind of just getting you used to uh messing with the tools these are just good quick exercises once you've done this once or twice you'll be able to create this glass literally in a minute and a half two minutes i mean fast super fast um, the only reason it's taking me so long is because I'm trying to explain everything. Um, now, if you want to get rid of that, see how it's got a flat spot there in the bottom of the wine? If you want to get rid of that, go ahead and go to Edit Paths by Nodes and then select that shape. And then you'll come in here. And if you, if you come in close enough, you'll see see how it's, it's uh, hanging over. Um, we're just going to move those up. Oops, not that one. Control Z is my savior, one of, one of them, and then we'll just drag that one up so that they don't, so that it doesn't look like, uh, you know, it's running off into the stem. And then you can also come in and just kind of drag that middle section down so that it uh, kind of follows the the shape of what a wine glass would. Uh, okay, let's scroll back out. Now what we'll do, just for fun, uh, and it's something you've got to. Um, kind of got to be careful with actually as far as as uh, t-shirt design and stuff like that because uh, in printing transparencies and and gradients and stuff like that sometimes they don't print so well so that's something that you want to be leery of but in this case we're going to create a job shadow and to make this look more like it's in a glass what we'll do is we'll go ahead click this um, and click duplicate and then we will um, turn the opacity way down but it'll just give it that bluish tint like the rest of the like the rest of the uh, like the rest of the glass so it'll look like it's actually in the glass and whatever looks good to you it will, will be fine um, but we'll make it look ah something like that that'll be fine okay so now we got our glass done and what we'll do is we'll go ahead and, and uh, object and we'll group that together and then what we'll do is we'll again we'll duplicate that and we're gonna make that black we're gonna create a shadow so now that we've got that black, what we want to do, I like using, uh, holding control on this also. Um, and what we'll do is we'll come in here and see that white cross hair right in the middle. What we want to do is we want to grab that cross hair, hold control, 
and then move that crosshair right about as close as you can just kind of the edge of the glass right there um, and that is what actually causes the graphic this is the rotation point as you can see our arrows are pointing like these are curved and these are pointing to the side you click it again they're pointing out they're all pointing out uh, if you you know so this click here is for uh, making it larger and smaller stuff like that this one here you're actually going to be able to skew with it with the sides in the middle or you'll be able to rotate it with the with these rotation handles but moving this down that's our rotation point so when we go to rotate this glass and again holding control so it gives me those stops but when we grab this handle here and go to rotate this glass you'll see it's rotating from the bottom there if I would have left that X up here it would be rotating there so the bottom of the glass would actually be me moving up that direction but we'll go ahead and click it uh, say one more uh, maybe one more like that and then what we're going to do is just kind of imagine that you, it's sitting on a table or whatever and you're going to click it so that you have your uh, other your directional arrows and then we're going to shrink this down just to where what we think it would look like if it was laying on a table something like that you know if it's a shadow being casted on a table just kind of lay it flat down like that then what we'll do is uh, with this object selected we'll kind of center that up the best we can maybe even uh, looks like it's hanging over a little bit so we even uh, by holding shift and control that'll leave the graphic in the same position it's in so holding shift and control we'll just drag in just enough to where we know that's hidden within there just kind of zoom in and you can literally just kind of line it up like that something like that will probably work fine and again this is just stuff to play with guys it's not this isn't going to be a work of art by any means uh, so anyway and then what we'll do is we'll move that to the bottom and then with your graphics still selected you can turn your opacity way down and that's going to give you the uh, kind of give you that effect of a of a shadow you can also blur it uh, but again these blurs stuff like that it's going to uh, they, they don't print well um, in my experience anyway they don't you know especially blurs that that type of for some reason because I actually ordered one of my shirts and it had some like a drop shadow I created with the blur and the blur was huge it showed because uh, see how this is also expanding when you blur it it showed it like way out further than it needed to be so uh, the blur you might want to uh, avoid uh, the gradients most people seems like they have pretty good luck with just you are not gradient with the opacity uh, seems like people have okay luck uh, with using uh, you know drop shadows and stuff with just the opacity setting but just turn that down to where you think it looks good um, something like that right there we may even stretch that out a little bit see if we can get away with that and still be hiding But anyway, that's something to play with. Um, and like I said, this is this is not this is by no means a, a work of art or anything like that. This is just kind of showing you how the tools work. Um, and that I mean that's what it's going to come down to uh, because you you know it's going to be up to you in in the end of, of of what kind of designs you create. But first, you need to kind of have a have a con, you know grasp the concept be, behind using the tools in Inkscape before you can start creating stuff. So that's why. Uh, you know with this tutorial that's that's pretty much just the gist of it is is not uh not trying to uh create something beautiful or anything like that we're just i'm just showing you how to use all this was created with ovals um and then some other just real basic basic stuff so uh but anyway guys i'm gonna leave it there for now i'm beginning to ramble um so i'm just gonna leave it there and, and let you guys play with that hopefully this will get you started in the right direction um, and if you have any questions or comments about this uh, feel free to post them below and again I, I appreciate you guys watching i hope that this helps you and be sure to just keep enjoying uh, creating those designs for those t-shirts guys